Collins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have been married 20 years. Awesome. So, what attracted you originally to John? Well, what had happened was, we grew up together. He lived down the street from me, five houses down and one across. And um, I, well his dad took all the neighborhood neighborhood kids to school. So I would walk down there and get a ride without my mama even knowing. It could have, <laughs> it was a different time then. We'd go to school, ride with him, and that's how we became friends. Just. I needed to ride to school. So you've known each other for 32 years? Though. Yes, 32 years. So did you have a little crush on him back then? No. I didn't, when I was eight, well he, he has it. This is my perspective. This is what happened. When I was eight, I was a baby. And when I turned 14, he liked me. He wanted me. No. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> It's it's a lot more innocent than that sounds. <laughs> he wanted to he wanted to date me, yeah, because it, it was a group of us. I had a little group, LCN. Shout out. Uh, we grew up on B Street, Buchanan, Seventh Buchanan, and it, it was a lot of kids back then. And so we all would hang out with one another and pl another and play with each other, and that's how, you know, he started dating me. And what's your perspective, John? Yeah, well, the truth. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I. Yeah. As, as my wife said, we all grew up on the same street and we were all like one big family and everything. So uh, as we got a little older and everything, uh, we started going to school and everything together and our friendship after a while, it just seemed like it was just meant to be. And it just, I can tell that we just had more feelings for each other than just being friends uh, both ways. So, I mean, it was almost inevitable that we was going to end up together. Our friends used to tell us mm -hmm. before we even went down the route of dating that seriously that um, we were going to end up married and all of that stuff with, with, and with kids and I guess they were right. What I did was, <laughs> it was very traditional. I got on one knee. I, I got I got on one knee with the ring and everything and I proposed to her and everything, but I, we kind of knew it was going down that route already. Uh, but once I found out that uh, the feeling I had with, for, with, when I was with my wife, I wanted that feeling when I wasn't with her. And I just couldn't imagine myself being with anybody else that would make me feel that way, so. When he proposed to me, I was still a baby. I was only 19 years old. And I had to, uh, my mama, I had to go tell my mama <laughs> that I was getting ready to get married. So I, I was excited because, you know, this he was my, he's my best friend. And I, I knew we were going to get married, but I didn't think it was going to be that soon, like that young. But I believe that God handpicked us to be one another. I know that divine design. Why do you think that's so? Just the way we grew up, it was intentional. He's intentional, but for us to, because the way I am, I, I'm real picky. And so he knew, he handpicked him for me. And so all the qualities, he treated his mom right, he respected his dad, and so I knew that he would take good care of me. We got jokes for days. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's up and down, just like anybody's relationship. Yeah. You have your, up, your ups, you have your downs and everything, but keep Christ first and just learn to laugh with each other about everything. And I mean, and you get, you get through it. And, Everything works out for the best. Well, keeping it real with the Collins, um, at the very beginning, like within the first few months, I am a mama's girl. I always have, always will be. And I was so used to, when, when we got married, it got real. Like, John, after the wedding, you know, people don't tell you this. It's just you and him. And he would go to work. He worked swing shift, meal. So I was by myself a lot. And I didn't like that. So I was ready to go home to my mom at the beginning. That was the beginning. And so, stuck it out. John, how did, how did you respond to that? Uh, <clears throat> a lot of times, uh, my wife would have uh, certain times where she would, she would want to vent, she would talk and I always felt like it was my my obligation or my job 
to correct or to fix whatever or however my wife was feeling at the time. Um, or if it was something that I felt that wasn't, you know, something that we can that we can get over and I didn't think it was that big, um, I would kind of some I would sometimes be like, oh man, that's nothing now. That's is that all this is that all that was bothering you or uh, but that would kind of make things a little worse. And it took me time to realize that just because she's venting or she's telling me something or, or telling me about things that's going on in her life at the time that's bothering her, she's not looking for me to fix it right then or to gauge whether it should be important or not. She just, listen, she just want a, a listening ear, someone to be sympathetic with her and to help her get through it. So through communication, I found that out and uh, I started taking a different take. Uh, we respect one another. I think that is very important because if you don't respect me, you know what I'm saying? It's, you know, people say it's 50, 50, no, it's 100, 100. You know, I respect, I have, I have confession. I'm keeping it real with the Collins. When we were, <laughs> When we first got married, um, we always like to have a lot of fun. We get couples together and have, you know, day, night, whatever. And we were young, so back then, when he had a whole lot of time, we didn't have any children. <laughs> we would have the guys come over, he would play the game. And the wives would come over and we would talk and chit-chat, whatever. And I'll never forget, I disrespected him. I was ready for everybody to go home. I was ready to shut it down. And I didn't know, I just wanted everybody to leave. I went and unplugged the game and erased everything. And he was you deleted so, the game? I deleted I the entire I game that. and the night was over. And everybody went home and that's what I wanted. But I, I realized I disrespected him. This is his house, you know? And that was that was at the beginning. Like I was I was 21, still young, still a baby. And I said, I would never do that again. And so it was years, he played the game all night long. But I always remember, I told you I will respect you. Always take your spouse's feelings in consideration. Mm -hmm. So before you do something, before I make, before I do so, I may, it may be something that I want to do, but I'm going to always take her feelings into consideration of how she's going to feel if I do that. Uh, how would it affect her uh, as opposed to affecting me? So I, I try to try to just keep her feelings in consideration as as well. She do the same thing with me. What would you say to any couple watching this? What are some seeds that they can sow into their relationship to have 20 years of bliss as the Collins have experienced? The seeds I would sow is... That was a good question. Yes, yeah, that was real. That was deep. Like that. that was good. <laughs> um, Again, to communication, respect, um, love Christ. Because if you if you love God, if, that, and that was another thing. Even when when before we got married, um, our backgrounds were different. Like I grew up straight Church of God in Christ, for real. You're for a real, Kojic girl. I'm a Kojic girl. Yeah. yeah. And you got on makeup. Yeah. Oh, and red lips <laughs> and some pants. So that's a whole other story. And he grew up Baptist, so our backgrounds were different. And so, just, just <laughs> we had to we take when you take two different two, two people and try to merge them as one, you know. So I, I would tell them to seek counsel, godly counsel. I'm not talking about somebody just telling you something that don't mean you any good. That I'm talking about godly counsel or their feelings or their opinions. No, and just really, really pray for pray for yourself. You know, ask God for discernment. Ask for wisdom before you enter into marriage, because marriage is work. But we always say marriage work when you work it. So it can, it can be possible. And, and just, you know, I'm not, I'm not on a, because I got married young, I don't tell people how old you should be, because that's, I'm, I'm not about control, because this is God's will here. And so we, we may think that we have some type of control over it, but when you surrender your life to God, He is in control. And so we follow His lead, so follow the lead of, of Holy Spirit. And if they're not saved, you know, that's a whole nother thing, but <laughs> that's a whole nother topic, whole nother, you know, get together, but just seek, seek godly counsel. You just gotta focus on being friends, being best friends, you know, 
because if you're not best friends in the marriage, then you end up just being roommates. So uh, that's that's a definitely a, a big part of it too, being best friends. And I, the Holy Spirit just reminded me to keep other people out of your marriage. Your in-laws will become your outlaw, outlaws, and uh, all those friends that that you're listening to and giving them your ear, and vice versa. They're not in the marriage with you, so you all make sure you come together because it's your marriage, not theirs.